Hello and welcome to another video. In this video tutorial, I want to show you exactly how the order book works on Bybit. Understanding the order book is crucial when you want to trade successfully. Um, we'll make it very casually. I, I don't want to rush through this here. You'll find a lot of tutorials where people squeeze everything in, in, into three minutes. I don't know why, because a lot of people don't actually understand it. I find it is a very central part of trading to understand this without understanding the order book don't trade and uh, so we we will not rush through this okay i might take my time to explain things here so um it, it is important that you understand it otherwise you will just you will just always have some question marks uh, in, in your mind so bybit is the crypto exchange that i personally use so it's the perfect example to demonstrate this don't worry if you are completely new. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what all these red and green here, red and green numbers, uh, what they all mean, how trades are actually executed, how price is actually moving, and why this is an important thing for trading. So let's start right right here in the order book. This is the actual order book that you see here. I mean, when you, whatever exchange you're looking at, whether it's Bybit or another one, obviously this here is Bybit, you, you typically have your trading view here or the chart, the chart. Then you have the order book here. You've got the ticker up there, right? In case you've never seen it on the right hand side, you can, you can place your orders. I'm not going to talk about that even, right? We only want to focus on this bit, which is actually the order book. Yeah. So we can, we can cover everything else in other videos, but this here is just the order book. So on the screen next to this price chart, then, yeah, you see this so-called order book on the top half you see a lot of red numbers. And these are the so-called sell orders. Traders who want to sell their Bitcoin, I'm here currently on the BTC USDT perpetual futures chart. Yeah, So traders who want to sell their Bitcoin, or in this case it's futures, but to keep it simple, I say Bitcoin, uh, to who want to sell their Bitcoin at a certain price, well, they would place them here. Okay, you see them actually here. This is called the ask side. So you see the price, then you see the quantity, and you see here the total. Yeah, on the right in in the right column. Um, in the lower half, bottom half, you see a lot of green numbers, prices, right? A lot of green green numbers, like here, hundred thirteen thousand four fifty one, hundred thirteen thousand four forty five. This is obviously the price, and then you have the quantity, and then you have the total. This is summed up, all right? And why is this important? Well, um, these are the buy orders. And traders who want to buy Bitcoin at a certain price, they would place them here. This shows all the buy orders. Top half shows all the sell orders. Very, very important. The bottom half is called the bid side. So keep it simple. Bid means buy it. And ask means sell it. Think of it as buyers placing bids and sellers asking for a price. That's how I always keep, you know, when I was new, I didn't understand it fully. I was like, what, what is a bid? What, what is an ask? Well, that's how you can remember it. That helped me. The difference between the highest bid, the highest bid here, that's the highest bid essentially, right? Bidding for the price. And this is, um, the lowest ask here, right? What the difference? The difference is called the spread, and it's often very, very small on liquid markets. Sometimes just a few dollars, so or even cents, depending on which asset you're looking at and which exchange. So you can maybe there's an exchange where you can trade some altcoin with low liquidity. There might be a huge, 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 huge gap, right? Um, huge difference between the highest bid and the lowest ask. So the spread is huge. It's, uh, but usually it's very small, especially on liquid markets. Um, as I said, sometimes a few dollars, sometimes a few cents even. So when, sometimes, when someone places what we call a market order, they actually cross the spread. That means they are buying directly from the red sell orders or they are selling directly into the green buy orders. Right? And this is key. Limit orders that you see here, they are limit orders. They are placed for a certain price. So people want to buy BTC for this quantity at a certain price. Yeah. These are limit orders. Up here, people want to sell BTC for a certain price. Quantity is also listed here. Um, th those are limit orders. 
Those are limit orders. They fill the order book, but they do not move the price until someone takes them. Market orders are what actually move the price. Now let's add one more important concept here. The idea of makers and takers. A maker, you, often will, you will often hear that, a market maker. Uh, people are always like, they use that, but they don't even know what it means. A market maker is someone who places a limit order that adds liquidity to the order book. So you are making the market by putting your order out there and waiting for someone else to hit it. And a taker is someone who places a market order or a limit order that actually immediately matches with an existing order. So you're essentially taking liquidity out of the order book. So where people say, people often say like the market makers, they move the price. It's nothing could be further from the truth, right? Because the market makers, they place limit orders, right? They just provide the liquidity. But it's actually the people, the takers, who place market orders who will move price. We can all move price. You know, always the people who say, oh, you can manipulate the market and everything. Everybody can do that if your position is, if your market order is large enough to, to buy up all of these BTCs to move the price up. Because here's a certain quantity, right? And if you want to buy BTC, yeah, for like massive amounts of BTC, you will buy up all of this. You will buy up all these these sell orders you you will you will you will you will you will basically yeah you will you will buy all these btcs so you will cross the spread like here yeah uh, seven btc for this price you'll just buy them and it, you, will, you will move up the price okay it's not massive because there is a lot of liquidity here right but if there is very low liquidity you can move very quickly through the book like on the on the weekend it can it, it'll happen faster right? Because there will be less orders in the book. But throughout the week, they will have more orders in the book. It'll take longer to move actually through the order book and move price, okay? It's very, 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 very important, very central. People don't understand this. That's why people always say that it's institutions who move the price and everything. Usually not. So if you or if I click uh, buy, yeah, just open along, yeah, if I just click this, buy market or something, if I buy now, then I'm a taker because I take liquidity from the red side. But if I instead place a limit buy at a lower level and wait, yeah, then I'm a maker. So that's very, very important to understand that difference because when you're a maker, you add liquidity into the green side of the book. So again, if you, if you, click, if you click buy market right now, you're a taker because you take liquidity from the red side. If you instead price, uh, place a limit order, at a lower level and weight, you're a maker because you add liquidity into the green side of the book. I hope that's clear. If not, then watch it again. That is so important. And this distinction is not only important for understanding the mechanics. It also matters because many exchanges, including Bybit, have different fees for makers and takers. Usually makers pay lower fees or even get rebates because they provide liquidity. Let me explain limit and market orders again with this in mind. So a limit order... A limit order, and you can, you can do that here, right? You can set it here. I didn't want to talk too much about that, but it's, it kind of blends into that whole concept. Um, a limit order is when a trader says, I only want to buy Bitcoin if the price, I don't know, falls to this level, right? Uh, I don't know, 113,455. I'm not going to buy now. You know, I want to wait a little bit. It could, it could be even lower, right? It doesn't show them all here. Uh, but you can you can actually make it show you. But um, yeah, I only want to buy Bitcoin if price falls to this level, or I only want to sell if the price rises to this level, like here, like hundred thirteen thousand four eighty six. That's when I want to sell. You know, not now, not now. Price is too low at the moment, right? Um, so until that level is then reached, the order just sits there in the book and makes liquidity. That's being a maker. You can all be market makers. <laughs> now, a market order means, here, yeah, maker, uh, marker, market, market. Uh, a market order means, I want to buy or sell right now at the best available price. This removes liquidity that's already sitting there. It will remove orders. Yeah? Whether it's a buy order or a sell order, it will remove from that, from that area yeah, that you're addressing. It, it will remove orders from there. So, 
this removes liquidity that's sitting there and that's being a taker. So again, market orders, they move the price. Limit orders only wait. And whether you're a maker or a taker depends on which type of order you place. That's all. Doesn't, doesn't, it's not related to how much money you have, right? Or with how much money you're trading. It's just simply about placing a limit or a market order. This is also why it's often not the institutions that move the market directly. Institutions usually place very large limit orders to manage risk. Those orders don't move anything until they're hit. It's mostly the retail traders reacting to news impulsively, emotions or technical signals who smash yeah, with the market order, who smash the buy and the sell buttons or open long, open short. Um, and they, they eventually move the price. If masses of people do the same thing, driven by emotions, fear and greed, the most basic emotions, well, they, they will move price. It's, that's also why Elliott Wave works, right? If you're here on this channel and you know this channel, then you know we use a lot of Elliott Wave analysis because it's based on market sentiment. Now, again, nothing is perfect science, right? It's also all about probabilities. But uh, yeah, it's, it's retail usually, market uh, orders that move the price. Now let's also look at some of the extra features inside that Bybit order book here. So first you can, you can change the aggregation level up here. That's called the aggregation level. For example, you can view orders grouped in steps of point, point 0.1 or 1 Bitcoin, 10 BTCs or even 100. Yeah. Um, so if I have it grouped to, to 100, then you just see more of it, right? They're just grouped, larger groups. So you see here, uh, 100, so you've got 113,800, then you see the quantity here and the total. And this is all summed up, right? So to move the price here, there is quite a lot of, well, you, you will have to place quite a lot large order, right? So you see exactly what the quantity is, right? Um, to move the price, essentially, right? So, but yeah, you can, you can have it a little bit more detailed, fine-grained here. So that's called the aggregation level, right? Um, now again, you, you will then see where really big blocks of orders are sitting. So again, you can, you can just go to 100 and you see the, the where, you know, where's that, where's the biggest quantity? Like here, there's a lot, there, there's not much around 114,300, right? But there's a lot at 114,500. So what, what information does that actually give you? Well, it tells you what, a liquid, where, where liquidity clusters are. That's often what you find on these liquidity liquidation heat maps or liquidity heat maps. Yeah? Um, if you see a very large buy cluster or a sell cluster, that's like support or resistance, right? Sell cluster would be resistance, obviously. A buy cluster would be support. And the price would need heavy selling, for example, to break through a support cluster. And it needs heavy buying to break through a resistance cluster. So if we suddenly start to move through here, uh, you know where it's likely going it, to... It might move quite quickly here through 114,100 to 114,400, but then it will likely stop here because around 114,400 and 114,500, there is, well, a lot of uh, resistance cluster, yeah? Same in the support area here. I mean, there seems to be a lot around 112,600, a lot, yeah? Um, and not so much between 112,900 and 112,700, okay? So that tells you where the clusters are. So for trading, for trading that can be very, very important. Um, so that's important to understand. So if you see very large clusters, that's often where the price might, might chop around a bit. Now, you can also change the display mode up here. Um, yeah, so what, what you see here is obviously top half, bottom half, um, but... Bybit obviously allows you to change that a little bit, make it kind of your own. By default, the order book shows obviously asks on top and bids on the bottom, but Bybit lets you switch to a split display, for example. That's the second option here, split display. It's just a different way of visualizing it, for example. You can also say, I only want to see the bids. Yeah, you have a bit more room here. I only want to see the cells. Yeah, but obviously space is limited, so that allows you to see a little bit more of it. Just a different way of visualizing it. Um, well, another tab that's very helpful can be the recent trade section. Um, that doesn't show existing orders or it doesn't show resting orders like the order book does, but actual trades that just happened and you see actually when they happened. Now, every line here, every line in this, in this recent trade section actually shows you 
whether it was a buy or a sell order, shows you the price and the size. So this way you can see in real time whether buyers or sellers are more aggressive, for example. I see them all, yeah? You see the new ones come in, right? Is it, is it buy orders, sell orders, yeah? So that red and green then helps you also to understand, um, you know, where's the pressure? Is there more buy pressure or is there more sell pressure? Now, um, then again, back to the order book, you know, what, what about that middle here? What about the price in the middle? A lot of people think that's kind of a, an average or something. Well, it is simply the last traded price. It's not an average. It's just the last price where a trade occurred. So sometimes you will also see something called the mark price. This is just a reference price calculated from several exchanges to protect traders from unfair um, liquidations yeah, when using leverage. But I think that's basically it. Let's, let's quickly do a recap quickly. Okay, so the red numbers are asks, people wanting to sell. The green numbers are bids, people wanting to buy. To keep it simple, bid means buy it, ask means sell it. The gap in the middle is the spread. It's very small, especially when there is a lot of liquidity, right? And frequently traded assets, for example, like Bitcoin. Crossing the spread happens, which means moving the price. Crossing the spread happens when a market order takes liquidity and moves the price. Limit orders sit in the book, but do not move the price until executed. Market orders are what move the price and make us add liquidity by placing limit orders. Takers remove liquidity by placing market orders. And liquidity clusters can act as support and resistance. And you see them here, top half, bottom half, the clusters, the quantity, right? That's where you find a lot of support and resistance or you understand where there is low support and resistance. And you can change the aggregation up here to see more or less detail, right? And the recent trade tab, well, a lot of buy orders come in right now. Um, so the recent trade tab, um, yeah, it, it just shows you when orders happened and whether they are more buy orders, sell orders, and are the buyers more aggressive or are the sellers more aggressive? It just gives you currently what's happening right now. And that's the order book in a nutshell. And once you understand it, you will see the market in a completely different way. The price chart shows the history, but the order book shows the battle happening live between buyers and sellers, right? And that's what creates the price. That's the price development process. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to support the channel, I've placed my Bybit partner link in the description. Bybit is the platform I personally use. And if you sign up through that link, you can also get access to some great bonuses. Of course, it's completely optional, but it does help me to keep creating free educational content like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.